Well, if you guys want to, you know, make some recommendations as to how you want the lab computers to be set up, let me know because I can definitely put that into the plan or try to put it into the plan of the next uh, the new building. Like if you're always finding the the monitor port <laughs> to plug in your devices, let me know, okay? You know, because you know that's that's a part of you know why I am a part of that committee is to able to collect your ideas and opinions so that we can make the next building a little bit more technology friendly. The monitor should have HDMI in and the stupid outlet thing should not have that power off. Yeah, that one we already know. <laughs> 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 that one we already know. Yeah. All right, so let me see. Boys on? Yeah. Yes. That okay. Thing. That thing used to be in every classroom. What? Yeah, the mic? Yep. I agree. But some people have a louder voice, like Mr. Box, you know, may not. Oh. He, he still needed it sometimes. You still need it sometimes? Well, the, the ventilation is not going to be as bad in the new building, so you, we won't have as much noise in the background to overcome. But, you know, having it available is always good because you know people can choose not to use it but people who want to use it can now use it yeah. it makes sense right so yep go ahead the recording recording the um it's inside spreadsheet we yeah, just yeah. finished up and uh -huh. um, it's the math on the line that we just did is completely wrong oh because of the um, copy paste yeah because of the copy and paste and i forgot which one has to be absolute right. row number the, the row number has to be absolute for the the width of the bit and the offset of the bit right. yep so I, I forgot that thank you Okay, and I might have forgotten to upload from last Thursday. So let me check. Last Thursday is the 20th, right? Yep, it is. Okay, so I'm just going to upload it anyway. If I re-upload, you know, Google or YouTube, well that would just kind of tell me that, oh, okay, you, you got this video online already, so it's not going to hurt. Besides, the district has, like, you know, insane amount of bandwidth. Somebody has to use it. Because otherwise, you know, the, the bean counters will look at the bandwidth and go like, hey, you guys got a you know, 20 gigabits per second you know, connection, and at all times, only 5% is being used. I've got to cut the budget to your, you know, bandwidth, to your internet connection. So we cannot allow that to happen, right? So somebody has to use up the bandwidth to justify, yes, we need even more, make it 40. They can share it with the school, with the students. <laughs> so your Wi-Fi is not that good? The Wi-Fi no. connection? No? Alrighty. Well, it says an error has occurred you know, because I had to say that, right? <laughs> Please <laughs> check your network connection and try uploading again. Okay, so let's refresh the screen. <clears throat> and the mic is not picking up my voice very consistently. It's kind of jaggy. I don't know why. And I'm going to upload the one from today's lecture as well. So let's see if that works. Okay, it's uploading. That's good. Oh, it's super fast. As I said, you know, we got too much bandwidth here. Somebody has to use it up. Let me have some. Yeah. Hard wire, hard wire my laptop up real quick. All right. So getting back to the spreadsheet. Okay, so this is where we left off. This mic is definitely, or it could be the positioning of the mic itself. Okay, let me see. Sorry, okay. Excuse me. Okay, I think this might be a little more consistent. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Okay, so getting back to the spreadsheet, which is over here. Um, I, I made a mistake because when I do the calculations, 
uh, some of these column references really should be absolute. The other ones should be relative. Okay, so B4 is relative is good, but B2 should be absolute when it comes to the, the row number because otherwise it's going to refer to the wrong row when I copy and paste it. And we want to dismiss this. Sorry? It's 2 you want, not B. Because you're specifying oh, the row number, right. Okay, gotcha. It's the row number, which is the 2. There we go. No, because if you do that, then it's always going to be a 2 all the way across. Right? You want it to be the bit offset every time. You don't want it to go down to 4, which is just... Right. So because we just want the row number to be... Oh, did I do it wrong? Uh, you extended it one too far. Uh, mm, yeah, just one too far. Do that one. And then this one is doing a summation. That's, that's good because it should be relative. Okay, so that one is good. Okay, so now we can copy and paste again. So we copy, paste. Ah, it looks different. Okay, so now we have a slightly <laughs> different number <laughs> from last time. All right, so let's go update the ROM of the microcode engine. And it's, I'm gonna use a little tool here. It's a, there should be a little post it tool so this way it, it stays up on the screen the whole time. It's always good to have a little tool like that. Nope, it doesn't stay on the screen all the time. In fact, it's fine. No, it's here. And I think I can right click and make it always on top. There we go. So now we can switch around and it will still be there. Switch back here, see? Nice. Like a real post-it. Okay, so we have 0D, oops, wrong window. We have 0D8004. There we go. Okay, so let's, it's time to test it again because we want to see whether this works or not, whether the microcode pointer is getting updated because of this. Okay, so we'll Double check, make sure everything is working. Uh, once again, we want to reset the processor first. So click reset. Go to the RAM module. Just give it a you know four two just like last time, because we want to see four two zero in the microcode pointer by the time the second slice is over. Okay. So let's check out whether that is the case or not. Um, then we do the clock thing. Control T will clock you know, in single step. Okay, so we want to focus on this part because the first thing we want to see is the instruction register itself getting updated. So we have control T and control T one more time. Okay, so 42 is now in here and the microcode pointer is correct to be at 001 because this is the slice that we want to execute at this point. It's not time yet to go to location 420 because we have not updated the microcode pointer. We also want the uh, program counter to update as well with the second slice because the program counter, what it is pointing to right now is already utilized. We are ready for the next instruction. I think this mic is not, is it kind of like not working? Sometimes it's loud and sometimes it's not. No, it's good. It's good? Okay. All right, so we'll do another control T um, to do the clock up here and because this one updates on the clock low now we have a 420 the program counter is updated to a 01 which is good uh, the micro pointer is now updated to 420 and the best part is you can also see that 420 is the location that is being addressed at this point which is what we want okay so we are now ready to actually execute the instruction that is corresponding to 42 in hexadecimal, or if you prefer in bits, it's going to be 0100, 0010. Is that okay? Kind of? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing we want to do is to read the instruction, and what I promised that I would do 
before you, know, you start with your homework assignment is I'm going to implement this instruction here. Add register with immediate value. Okay, so if you don't know what is immediate, it's just constant. Okay, the value that we are adding to the register is right next to the opcode in RAM. Okay, so that makes it easy. Okay, because we, because what I want to do is to specify, hey, let's change the register A by this much. By how much? Well, the next byte, the byte next to this opcode will tell you what. Okay. So we want to implement that instruction. And in this case, we have the opcode in binary being specified as 0110-11XX. So this part, this XX, gives you two bits to specify which register do we want to work with. Okay, so that's kind of the important part, is we want to specify which, which register. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Yep. So you're recording, right? I am recording, yes. Okay. Uh, let me double check. Okay, it doesn't hurt to check again. So the recorder is on, and then the volume is also you know, corresponding to the mic. <laughs> okay, so this is where I might need to go back and check whether the ALU can accept one of the inputs <coughs> from not a register. And I might have made a mistake here, because both of the operands of the ALU has to come from a register. So that means I cannot quite do that instruction. I have to load something into a register first. <sighs> okay. It, it's not a big problem. It is just one, it, it, it makes it a little bit more cumbersome to do what I need to do, but it's not impossible. So I'm gonna have to change that, yep. Does that mean you have to implement one slice of code first? Sort of, but but it, since it's not a part of the opcode, I cannot. I don't have any bits to specify why why, as the way it is specified here. So instead of doing this, I'm going to change the instruction itself. Instead of adding, it's just really loading <coughs> from that location. So let me change this a little bit. It won't impact your homework assignment. It's just impacting you know, what I'm doing here. So I'm going to say load register with, instead of add, it's load register with immediate value, which means, okay, I want to initialize a register with the content of the instruction next to the opcode. Okay, so that's load. So this I can do, because if I go back to this diagram, I just have to make sure that there's a way to update a register, and updating a register is not too, too difficult. So when we, when we look at this diagram, we want to focus on the in here, and we say, okay, what can we use to update a register in the register map? It depends on the mugs here, and if we take the top part, it does hook up to the data bus, right? And we can use the program counter to specify the location, and then whatever is being addressed at the location, we use it to update the uh, red, uh, A register in the register map. Is that okay? So you will end up with actually four copies of this thing because each op code is only good for one register. So you will have four almost identical sequences for the four variations because you have four potential input registers. Okay? But we'll make it work for one first just to make sure that it does work, right? All right, so getting back to the spreadsheet, let's see, the spreadsheet is over here. Okay. So now we are ready to specify the other instruction. And for those of you who like to comment and you know make sure that everything is clear, you can always just add one more um, column to specify, okay, these four columns specify blah, 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 and these four columns specify blah, blah, blah. So we can add one to the left, like that. And then we can just combine these four. And let's see, it's going to be Format, merge, all, there we go. And this one is for no op. Because if the next instruction is also 0, 0, 0, 0, it will go back to the location 0 of the, of the microcode ROM and just keep doing this over and over again. Okay? But the key is the program counter does increment to the next instruction. All right, so the next one is um, what we want to implement is load, 
And I'm going to use uh, a semi C um, notation here. XX is designating a particular register, and it's going to get the content of um, PC plus plus like that. Okay. So this is the way I document what the instruction is supposed to do. So let me just okay. How many people can read this particular C notation? Okay. It is actually PC++, I got it wrong in the text document. Uh, okay. Because the program counter is already incremented by the time we decode the instruction, so we don't have to pre-increment, instead we have to post-increment it. Okay. So does it mean x, uh, what's the time symbol for? The time symbol is the reference in C. Oh, I see. So we are going to do a post-increment of the program counter, but with the value before the increment, we will dereference into RAM, mm -hmm. and then the content of that particular address in RAM is going to be what we use to update register XX. And XX is basically two bits. Zero, zero specifies register A, and then one, one specifies register D in the register map. Okay? All right. So let's, let's check out all of these fields and find out what we need to do. So the more you do this, um, the, the quicker it becomes because you already know what it means, right? So we don't want to put a zero here. We don't want to reset the microcode pointer. Um, <clears throat> microcode pointer selection is not important because we are not even updating it, right? Okay, just double check. So we go to microcode. This is the selection pin. And because we are not, well, we are updating the microcode pointer because we want to increment it. So we do want it to be the plus one. So we do want a one here to increment the, the microcode pointer. Uh, the program counter, do we want to update it? No. Well, this is by the time we get here, we, want to, we don't want to update it because, no, by the time we get here, we, no, you're correct. We don't want to update it because to get here, the program counter is already incremented to the location where we have not worked with yet. So we don't want to increment the program counter, put a zero here. That also means you know, PC mux mux is irrelevant. Okay, move this out of the way. Um, the address mux is important because I need to specify, okay, who is driving the address bus because we are reading from memory after all. So we go to this part here. And then we say we want the program counter to drive the address bus. So we click to select. And then we look at the mux and say, OK, we need a 1 for address mux. So we put a 1 here. Um, ALU operation, not useful because we are not performing act any actual calculations. No, do not enable it. Um, the output of the register bank is also not useful. So we want to turn off anything that has to do with output of the register bank. But the input is useful. Okay, now this is, the, this is the part where you need multiple copies of, because this one is register input select, which is specifying which one of the four registers am I updating. So now you have to make a decision. Okay, do you want XX to be zero, zero for this particular slice? Do you want it to be one for this slice and whatnot? Okay, so we'll start with zero, zero for register A. Okay, there we go. So once you do this, you might want to go back and fix the description here because we are no longer specifying any one of the four registers. In this case, we are specifically working with register A. Is that OK? okay. All right. So now we go to register input enable. We should specify a yes because we are updating or trying to update one of the registers. RI mux, OK, you go back here. RI mux is the mux that can help you select what are we using to update the register. You got two paths here. One path is coming from the A output of the ALU. That's not the right path because we are not using the ALU for any calculations. So we have to use this zero, which means it's coming from the data bus. This is coming from the data bus. So we want it to be a zero. Uh, RAM load needs to be a one because we are reading from RAM. And since we are reading from RAM, we also want to say, OK, RAM, pay attention. You know, we need you to be paying attention here. Uh, we want to specify a 0 for instruction register enable, because we are not updating 
the instruction register. So we want to put a zero here. And now we can just copy and paste this row again. And that would be this row, right? To the right. Yep. Copy and paste. And we have an op we have a hexadecimal specification of this. But this does not belong to location two. This is location zero, this is location one, but this is not location two because it's the first location corresponding to this particular instruction. So now we have to look at the opcode just to find out you know, which instruction we are you know, specifying. So with this one, you know, I can use I can use the next row to specify the actual instruction. So the actual instruction, for the actual instruction, we have to go back to the this document here. This time we are specifying 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and xx are all 0, zeros. So we have a 6c as the actual location. So when we go to the ROM to update that location, we have to add the content and go to, what was it again? 6c. C. So we locate 6c0. Remember, it's not just 6c, it's 6c0 because we had four zeros <coughs> as the least significant digits. So we locate 6C0, 6C0, which is this location. And I'm gonna use this to help me you know, copy and paste between the spreadsheet and this part here. Uh, where's my spreadsheet? Here, spreadsheet, there we go. So we will copy this from the spreadsheet into my little post-it and then switch over to the ROM specification. Um, 